Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now today's job I've got to sort out the where are we? Sort out the electrics before I can start plasterboarding in, in this extension. So today's job I've got to sink in some back boxes so they end up flush ish to the front of the plasterboards. <coughs> They can be set in a little bit further, but they don't want to be sticking out. Otherwise, when you come to plaster it, you'll hit your, your trowel on them and you'll put nasty scratches in your trowels and you'll never get a, a nice flat finish in your plaster. Um, and then something that's not entirely necessary, but it's good practice to do is the, the wires that come down the wall. There's a bit of, <coughs> bit of plastic capping Oh well you can see that on camera. Plastic cap in there and that just sits over the wire like so and it gets nailed into the wall and that just gives the wire a, or the cables a little bit of protection. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I did was decide where I wanted all my sockets. Now I've done this on the plans for the extension, so I know roughly where they all are. Um, I've got to build a stud wall on this side, um, so they've moved in a little bit. Now here's a good tip from an electrician friend of mine. If you can see here, I've already marked out for this socket here. So he told me that the zone for, for running wires is 150 mil from the corner of the wall. So he says he does that 150mm and then he puts the socket which gives all this space here as a zone for running the wires down which was a good tip. So the same friend, very good friend of mine has helped me run all the wires so we've got all the, the wires for the sockets, got one coming from the garage, the cooker, more sockets done all the wires for the spotlights, there's a chandelier going in there. So we run all that before the insulation went in above the ceiling. And then through the wall there and it goes back to the consumer unit waiting to be wired up. So the next thing I did was to set up my laser level. So I decided the height so the height of a kitchen worktop is roughly 900 mil. So I just went 150 mil above that. So 1,050 mil. I've done it to the bottom of the sockets. Now this is the cooker socket. Um, so it's cut in a lot deeper. The back box is a lot deeper than a normal socket. So I've done that last night and it was Saturday night, it was late, I'd had a couple of beers and I cut it a little bit too deep. So I show you a little tip that I've learned to get over there. So I've just unscrewed it because it's hard to film and unscrew at the same time so it's not off camera. I take that out. I've just put a bit of thick earth wire behind now I cut it roughly about 6mm too deep and that wire happened to be roughly about 6mm so it packed it off a bit. Now any professional elect electricians will probably be cringing at that but I thought that was a pretty good solution. I didn't have any wood to hand but I had that nice thick bit of wire and it just happened to be the right thickness so I used that. I thought that's a good tip. Okay, so I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but there's the laser line there. You see it moving. It sets off the height of that socket and it'll ping around the corner and keep a level line. Just with a tape measure, I just need to measure out 150mm, which is there. Then I can move the laser and then I can draw where the socket's going to go. So that's plumb and that's level. 
150 mil away from the, the corner of the wall and then the socket. If I offer the back box up, I just finish roughly going around it. And that's what I need to cut out to sink the back box in. Now I've just worked out the the box needs to be sunk in about five millimetres just so the uh, the plasterboard ends up flush with the front and as a nice coincidence the diamond tip on the grinding wheel happens to be roughly about five or six mil so I'm just going to go down the depth of the diamond tip so safety first let's get on with it So I know this doesn't look pretty and it always leaves marks on my face so I look stupid in a minute but I prefer to save my lungs and save my eyes and look stupid, I don't care. And something I forgot about is you need good ventilation because it's going to get dead dusty so I just open the bifold doors. Right, so that's the grinding all done on that one. There's just about another 20 to do. Um, one day I might invest in some extraction for my grinder, but at the minute I haven't got it, so it was very dusty. Now, I cut it into little chunks, so it's easier to knock out with the old cold chisel and hammer. Now, I could do it with the SDS, but because it's only small enough to do out, it's easy enough to do with that. Lovely, just under 20 mil sticking out. Right, so now I can fix it back to the wall. I'm going to use the two middle screw holes, the elongated ones, so there's a bit of wiggle room up and down and side to side, just so I can level it up perfect. plugs and then I like to use inch and a half tens just so they're, they're a bit chunky get a good grip on the box Now I can knock out one of these little discs, put in a little rubber grommet, and now the cable can go in. Last job to do is to put the bit of capping over it. I've already cut it to length, and to fix it, a few of them little masonry nails so 
So there it is, finished. Well, one of them anyway. As I said, I've got about another 20 to do. But that's what I've got to do before the plasterboard. And I've got a big stack of plasterboard there. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.